So the lectionary passage for today is from Acts 16. We started in Acts 16 last week and, and heard about Paul and Silas and Timothy traveling and ending up uh, baptizing Lydia, who was gathered for a prayer meeting by the river. She was the first convert in Europe to Christianity, a very momentous time. Well, we're continuing in the same chapter, but I'm going to sort of summarize where I'll pick up. I'll actually pick up at verse, uh, verse 25 in chapter 16. And, and what's happened since the baptism of Lydia, Paul and Silas have now been thrown into jail in Philippi for calling out the spirits from a slave girl who had a gift of divination. Her owners, who are unhappy with the loss of income because she has lost her gift, accuse Paul and Silas of advocating unlawful customs, whatever that is, one of those sort of catch-all charges. Paul and Silas are attacked by the crowd that's gathered. They're uh, stripped of their clothing on the order of the magistrates. They have them then beaten with rods. They're thrown into prison where they are tortured while their feet are held in the stocks. And that's where our story picks up. Listen to God's word as it comes to us from the book of Acts. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he had supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they answered, believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At that same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Holy God, in this time, unshackle our hearts and our minds, set us free from all that binds us and keeps us from hearing a word from you as we ponder your living word in our midst. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So a, a colleague of mine recalls a mission trip in Nicaragua. He and members of his congregation were there, and they were invited one evening for dinner in the home of a member of the church with which they were working. After dinner, their hosts got up, stood there by the table, and sang hymns beautifully, without hymnals or accompaniment. Some of you I know have experienced a similar thing on a mission trip. Well, my friend writes this. He says, I was really enjoying this gift until suddenly it occurred to me what was coming next. They would, of course, invite me and my friends to stand up and sing a few hymns back to them. And what would we sing? Jesus loves me, kumbaya. We weren't prepared for such sharing because we had few hymns written on our hearts. I recall looking around to see if any of our group were choir members who might be able to take over for us. I, I've had similar experiences on mission trips and further complicated by my own sort of additional fear that, that I might be asked also to like give a brief message spontaneously and, and be translated after every sentence, which really doesn't help you carry your thoughts forward much, and I would simply have to say, I don't have a manuscript, I can't do this. 
I know Paul was a good preacher. But, you know, there's no other mention of him in Scripture singing. Which made me wonder, was he a baritone? Maybe a tenor. I, or, or could Paul even carry a tune? Maybe, maybe Silas was the one who led hymns when they got together for church. But, but it does say in the text, Paul and Silas were praying and singing. Paul was singing, and I'm guessing no hymnals. I mean, if you think about those times, printed text wasn't very common. <laughs> Which is one of the advantages of living in a time like that. You, you had so many songs written on your heart. You learned everything by, by rote, by, by hearing and repeating the book of Psalms, the Hebrew scripture, the Hebrew songbook, that, that became your, the songs that you knew. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Of course, you and I can, you and I can still do the same, learn by rote. You know. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Listen to you. You know it just like that. And, and my guess is most of us did not learn that song from a printed manuscript. You know, I have never seen a musical score for fly, eagles, fly. <laughs> and I'm guessing in Nicaragua, if we stood up by the dinner table and started singing that, they would wonder what scripture we were alluding to. I, that Isaiah 40 passage about eagle wings, right? But this text, this text makes me wonder, what, what suppose, suppose you had to do take out worship? Then an opportunity happened in, in your life, in your day, to, to show your faith by worshiping the living God wherever it is you happen to be in a particular moment, be it in a jail cell or around a campfire, in a, in a home, at a, at a graveside in a hospital or a, a bus station or trapped in a frightening elevator. Would you be ready? What are, what are the hymns that are, that are written on your heart or the, or the scriptures that would immediately come to mind if you beckoned that portion of your being? Or better yet, perhaps just in the quiet of your own soul, in a, in a peaceful place, or, or in a moment of sadness, or despair, or anxiety, or, or fear during a storm, or, or in an instance of sheer joy or wonder, are there words of hymns or texts of scripture that come to mind? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Of the Father's love begotten, ere the worlds began to be, he is Alpha and Omega. This is burned into my brain. I mean, suppose, supposing you, you took a meal to a, a neighbor down the street who had a serious illness in the household, and, and someone said to you, well, you know, we know you go to church. We see you going and coming on Sundays all dressed up. Would, would you like sing a hymn for us or recite a scripture, say a prayer for us? What would you do? What's written on your heart, my heart? Are you and I ready always, as, as it says in 1 Peter, ready whenever, wherever, to give an account of the hope that is within us? Last week, Pastor Jenny pulled out a, a folded map at the children's time, like the maps I used to keep stacks of in my glove compartment in the, in the car, you know, for traveling 
And just imagine you're, you're traveling somewhere, you, you get a rental car, and they don't have any more left with navigation. And you're like in North Dakota, and there's no cell signal, so you can't even do the Google Maps thing and have the lady talk to you about where to go. Could you pull out a map and go old school? So that's what this text feels like to me. And there's no hymnal, no bulletins, heaven forbid. Even and especially in circumstances as stressful as imprisonment, Paul maintains a spirit of worship and thanksgiving. Even in his letters written while in prison, Paul speaks about the need to always and for everything give thanks to God, and, and he often uses musical terms along with it. With gratitude in your heart, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God, he writes to the Colossians. To the Ephesians, be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times. It's midnight. And it's jail. It's dark. And Paul and Silas are praying and singing hymns. And the prisoners are listening. And you can imagine, they, they probably heard what their day was like. An angry crowd has turned on them. False, false charges are pressed against them. They're arrested, they're stripped, they're beaten. And then they're sealed in the bowels of the prison. It's then in the deepest part of the night, their hymns and their prayers I heard by Almighty God who sets them free with an earthquake. The doors are open. Do you hear the echoes in this story? The echo of a, an angry crowd and false charges and an arrest, and a beating, and being thrown into the bowels of the earth only to have a door flung open. This is one of a series of resurrection and new life stories in the book of Acts, which is the description of God's resurrection power unfolding on the earth. And it's clear that resurrection power is, is contagious because because the jailer wants what Silas and Paul have. It's like, whatever you got, it's got you singing in the middle of the night after your day, I want some of that. How do I get that? How is my life, my spirit, my very self saved? He and his household are baptized that day. And the risen Christ is met in yet another household on the continent of Europe. And the gospel begins to spread. All because a couple guys were singing. Reminds me of the old hymn written by Robert Lowry, How Can I Keep From Singing? <laughs> and it's been covered by everybody from Pete Seeger to Bruce Springsteen, to Eva Cassidy, the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, and Audrey Assad, who we had in concert just a few weeks ago. All of them. Here's the text. My life goes on in endless song above earth's lamentations. I hear the real, though far off, hymn that hails a new creation through all the tumult and the strife. I hear its music ringing. It sounds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? You and I belong to a God of resurrection power who sets the prisoner free 
gives us the anchor that holds us fast in the storm. How can you and I help from singing?